Hello students, welcome to Affairs Cloud. My name is Vikas. We have an app by the name Careers Cloud which you can go and download through Play Store. Once you have downloaded the application, you will be able to easily log in using your Gmail ID. Once you have logged in, you will be redirected to this page where you will be getting this UI and there will be option for home, all courses, my courses and doubt section. On this application, you will be getting multiple PDFs, multiple content on daily basis that will be enhancing your learning. Our first segment is daily current affairs. We make sure to provide you current affairs on daily basis in both English as well as in Hindi content. The PDFs for the same are uploaded on our application. And apart from this, we also make sure to provide you with quizzes that will help you to revise the content after you have gone through the PDF. Next comes our weekly content. The content is also provided in both English as well as in Hindi. And here we also make sure to provide you quiz also of that past week's current affairs that will be enhancing your learning as it is a compilation of the important topics, important MCQ questions for the last week. Similar for the monthly, the PDFs are very important. They provide you insights of various topics as well as we also make sure to provide you the quiz of monthly questions that are very important for learning. Next, we also provide you with important PIB articles on daily basis so that you can go through these particles and have an insight about that particular topic. Not just this, we also make sure to provide you important events that are happening globally and make sure to give you the right analysis. One of the most important segment of our application is that we make sure to provide you with the correct exam analysis. When you are having exam, we make sure to provide you with the previous year questions so that the student can go through the exam pattern and the syllabus and can prepare the exam accordingly based on the pattern. After the exam, we also make sure to provide you with the exam analysis. Then for the students who are preparing for state exams, they will be also beneficial here as we will make sure to provide with state wise current affairs for them. Apart from this, we also make sure to cover the topic wise current affairs such as your national affairs, government schemes, international affairs, banking and finance, economy and businesses as these are the topics from which the examiner definitely asks the question and these are covered on the monthly basis. So friends, do check our application. It will be a one stop solution for learning. Apart from this friends, Carrier Scout is hiring. We are looking for candidates for subject matter experts in quants reasoning and English and also we are looking for a content creator for current affairs topic on daily basis, weekly basis and monthly basis. There is also an opening for a person who can translate the English content into Hindi. If you want to apply, you can scan the code here for further details or you can go to the description and click the link below. These positions are available both in full time and freelance for serious candidates. Hello everyone. So in this video, we will be discussing important current affairs for 22nd of Feb. Let's start. First is Sagar Anklan. These are the guidelines for the Indian Port Performance Index that was recently released by whom? So these guidelines for Indian Port Performance Index was released by Sarbandana Sonowalji. Correct. He's our Union Minister of Port Shipping and Waterways and has released Sagar Anklan. This is the national benchmarking guidelines for the Indian Port Performance Index and the main aim here is to boost the efficiency to boost the efficiency of ports. Correct. Take a note of this. Then the guidelines for the national benchmarking of Indian Port Performance, they will apply to all Indian seaports and the aim here is to achieve the mapping of Indian ports that is their logistic performance, their efficiency, what are the standards, what are the definitions, what are the global standards of the ports all around the world and how can we improve the productivity, how can we improve the sustainability of our ports so that more and more trade can take place through those ports and we know ports are important because all the import and export takes place from those ports. So coming back, Sagar Anklan, these are the new guidelines for Indian Port Performance Index released by Sarbandana Sonowal. Next, next is how many books were launched on Swachh Bharat Mission Grameen by Gajendra Singh. So remember recently Union Minister Gajendra Singh Shekhawat who is our Union Minister of Jal Shakti has released three books, three impactful books on Swachh Bharat, uh, on Swachh Bharat Grameen Mission, right? And this was launched during the national conference, 
दैट वॉज हेल्ड ऑन जल जीवन मिशन एंड स्वच्छ भारत मिशन ग्रामीण राइट एंड दे वर हेल्ड ऑन सिक्सटीन एंड सेवनटीन ऑफ फेब वेयर दे वर हेल्ड दिस नेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन जल जीवन मिशन एंड स्वच्छ भारत मिशन ग्रामीण वॉज हेल्ड इन लखनऊ लखनऊ यूपी राइट अनदर थिंग रिमेंबर वेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट स्वच्छ भारत मिशन ग्रामीण राइट दिस इज द फेज टू करेक्ट एंड दिस इज बेसिकली क्लीनलीनेस मिशन सो कमिंग बैक दीज आर द थ्री बुक्स दैट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर दैट वॉज रिसेंटली लॉन्च नाउ इफ वी टॉक अबाउट द बुक्स वॉट आर द बुक्स फर्स्ट इज स्वच्छता क्रॉनिकल्स स्वच्छता क्रॉनिकल्स दिस इज द फर्स्ट बुक सेकेंड रिमेंबर स्वच्छता ग्रीन लीफ रेटिंग दिस इज द नेम ऑफ द सेकेंड बुक एंड थर्ड बुक इज योर कंपेडियम ऑन लिक्विड वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट राइट सो स्वच्छता क्रॉनिकल्स स्वच्छता ग्रामी स्वच्छता ग्रीन लीफ रेटिंग एंड कंपेडियम ऑन लिक्विड वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट दीज आर द थ्री बुक्स लॉन्च बाय गजेंद्र सिंह शेखावत आर यूनियन मिनिस्टर ऑफ जल शक्ति ड्यूरिंग अ नेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन जल जीवन मिशन एंड स्वच्छ भारत मिशन ग्रामीण दैट वॉज ऑन सिक्सटीन एंड सेवनटीन ऑफ फेब हेल्ड वेयर इन लखनऊ यूपी करेक्ट एंड वाई वर दीज बुक्स बेसिकली लॉन्च दीज बुक्स वर लॉन्च टू प्रोवाइड द जनरल पब्लिक अबाउट द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ पॉल्यूशन टू हाउ मेक श्योर वाई द पॉल्यूशन मैनेजमेंट एंड दीज मैनेजमेंट ऑफ दीज स्वच्छता बेसिकली क्लीनलीनेस इज इम्पॉर्टेंट राइट ऑल द डिजीज दैट आर कॉज बिकॉज ऑफ द अनहाइजीनिक प्लेसेस करेक्ट एंड टू मेक पीपल अवेयर अबाउट द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ इट दीज बुक्स वर लॉन्च नेक्स्ट टेक अ नोट ऑफ दिस ट्वेल्थ एडिशन ऑफ नेवल एक्सरसाइज मिलैन वॉज हेल्ड वेयर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल रिमेंबर दिस ट्वेल्थ एडिशन ऑफ एक्सरसाइज मिलैन वॉज होस्टेड बाय विच कंट्री इट वॉज होस्टेड बाय आर इंडिया राइट वेयर वॉज दिस हेल्ड लोकेशन इट वॉज हेल्ड इन आंध्र प्रदेश एंड इन आंध्र प्रदेश टू इन विशाखापट्टनम आंध्र प्रदेश दिस वॉज हेल्ड इन टू फेज हार्बर फेज एंड सी फेज करेक्ट एंड दिस एक्सरसाइज स्टार्टेड ऑन नाइनटीन ऑफ फेब एंड वॉज टिल ट्वेंटी सेवेंथ ऑफ फेब करेक्ट एंड अनदर थिंग कैन बी आज दिस एक्सरसाइज वॉज होस्टेड बाय इंडियन नेवी इफ फोर्स आइज आज एंड कंट्री देन इंडिया करेक्ट एंड दैट टू इन इंडियन नेवी ईस्टर्न नेवल कमांड कंडक्टेड दिस और होस्टेड दिस एक्सरसाइज राइट मिलैन एम आई एल ए एन नाउ वॉट डज दिस मिलैन स्टैंड फॉर मल्टी नेशनल नेवल एक्सरसाइज राइट मिलैन मल्टी नेशनल नेवल एक्सरसाइज एंड दिस इज द ट्वेल्थ एडिशन ऑफ दिस नेवल एक्सरसाइज करेक्ट टेक अ नोट ऑफ दिस एंड देर इज अ थीम फॉर दिस मिलैन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर हेयर यू कैन सी कमारिडी कोहिजन एंड कोलेबरेशन मूविंग ऑन वेयर डेड धर्मेंद्र प्रधान इनोग्रेटेड इंडिया फर्स्ट स्किल इंडिया सेंटर इफ वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट डाटा सेंटर्स राइट देन रिमेंबर यूपी इन यूपी दैट टू नोएडा एंड ग्रेटर नोएडा राइट दीज आर द टू लोकेशन दैट विल बी एमर्जिंग नाउ एज द डाटा सेंटर्स करेक्ट बट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट फर्स्ट स्किल इंडिया सेंटर सो धर्मेंद्र प्रधान रिसेंटली इनोग्रेटेड इंडिया फर्स्ट स्किल इंडिया सेंटर वेयर वॉज इट इट वॉज इन संबलपुर डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ ओडिशा इन संबलपुर डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ ओडिशा एंड एज द नेम सजेस्ट स्किल इंडिया सेंटर द एम ऑफ दिस स्किल इंडिया सेंटर इज टू प्रोवाइड ट्रेनिंग स्किल्स टू यूथ एंड इंडिविजुअल्स वेयर दे विल बी लर्निंग मल्टीपल स्किल्स करेक्ट एंड ऑन द बेस ऑफ द स्किल्स दे विल बी नाउ जॉब रेडी एम्प्लॉयमेंट रेडी एंड इन द मार्केट दे कैन अप्लाई फॉर जॉब करेक्ट दे विल बी प्रोवाइडेड हेयर विद सर्टिफिकेशन राइट एंड मोर देन द इनिशियटिव हेयर हैज ऑफर्ड ट्रेनिंग टू मोर देन फोर थाउजेंड कैंडिडेट सो फार इफ यू टॉक अबाउट एन एस डी सी एन एस डी सी इज योर नेशनल स्किल डेवलपमेंट कॉरपोरेशन करेक्ट नेक्स्ट एंड फॉर दिस स्किल इंडिया सेंटर एन एस डी सी इज मॉनिटरिंग एवरीथिंग एंड इंप्लीमेंटिंग एवरीथिंग नेक्स्ट What is the rank of India in Henley Passport Index 2024? So recently, Henley Passport Index was released, right? And question asked here is, what is the rank of India in this Henley Passport Index? So India's rank is 85. Earlier, India's rank in Henley Passport Index was 80. Now it has slipped to 85, right? 
and remember it has dropped from 80 to 85 just in a month earlier in jan 2024 it was 80 and now in feb 2024 it is 85 correct then who secured the top position here last month also we mentioned six countries were on the top position france germany italy spain japan and singapore these are the six countries that are on the top position and they dominate the spot with the most powerful passports in the world these six countries they have visa free entry in 194 countries out of a total of 227 countries right then who released this henley passport index it was released by henley and partners who is the chief executive officer of henley and partners dr jargon stefan and where is the headquarter of it it is in london uk and it was established in 1997 next next is india contributed how much amount to ibsa fund to elevate poverty that means in order to reduce poverty in ibsa now what is this ibsa stands for ibsa is your india brazil south africa ibsa fund right so basically india contributed how much amount to elevate poverty in these countries through this ibsa fund so the amount donated by india was 1 million dollar correct the aim here is to address the development challenges such as your poverty hunger climate change right and this IBSA fund, it was established in 2004 and became operational in 2006. Correct. Next. And remember, this $1 million was presented by Ruchira Kamboj, who is India's permanent representative to UN. Right. Next. Next is, according to S&P Global Ratings report, India's credit growth will moderate to how much percent in fiscal year 25. So according to report from S&P Global Ratings, India's credit growth is expected to moderate to 14% in financial year 25. That is from April to March 2024 to 2025. Correct. And this is down from the existing 16% growth in the first three quarter of fiscal year. 24 this is due to the tightening in funding conditions that plays a pivotal role right we know that in us the fed has increased the interest rates right earlier the interest rates for on loans were close to one percent zero percent also but now they are close to five percent due to which the lending is becoming more difficult right the free money that was earlier available is not not available in the market you have to pay more in order to get loans right even now in india you can see earlier two to three years back the loan interest that you used to get was 6.5 to 7 percent but now that has been given gone to 9 point about 9.5 percent right so what is this the loan has become more expensive now it is more difficult to get loans now right you have to spend more money on the interest as compared to that of earlier situation correct then apart from this remember we know that in india uh, every country takes loans right so when the fund when the loans in our country gets more and more expensive we will be looking at funding from different parts of the world even we will be looking at foreign investors institutional investors right high net in uh, high net individuals all around the world so that more and more funding can be taken place due to this funding crunch that is going on even let me tell you a fact in usa it is they are saying that now the debt they have taken is close to four trillion dollar now it has exceeded four trillion dollar now and there is a huge bubble that is going on all around the world it is expected that still this loan will keep on rising but uh, let me tell you there is a site you can just go and on google and type usa debt live right usa debt live just open the first website and you will be looking at the numbers they want keeps on increasing like every second right it is a dynamic website where you will be seeing multiple loans multiple 
charts, multiple figures, and you will be able to see that every second USA is printing money, and every second the debt is increasing day by day. Moving on. Here you can see according to the report from S&P Global Rating, India credit growth is expected to moderate to 14% in financial year 25, April to March, down from the existing 16% growth in the first three quarters of fiscal year 24 due to tight funding conditions that play a pivotal role in limiting loan expansion for many banks. Next, next remember credit growth dynamics and margin projections. The first three quarters of the current financial year witnessed a 16% year over year increase. The bank margins are anticipated to contract due to heightened competition for deposits, policy rate cuts and pose an additional threat to margins. S&P envisions system wide margins decline to 2.9% in 24-25 from the current 3%. What are the risks for the private banks? S&P has won deeper margin impact if the lenders sustain high credit growth. Private banks with a loan to deposit ratio potentially closing 97% are more exposed. Even there is a commercial office space crisis that is going on in USA. We are not talking about India here. We are talking about USA. In India, commercial office space is doing very good now the work from home is ending and more and more companies will be leasing more office space and more employees has to visit those offices but what is happening in usa these commercial office space they were taken on loan right and their loan is about to mature in this year in 2024 and it is expected almost 1 trillion dollar of loan will be maturing and the new interest rate earlier the loan was taken at almost around 0% or 1% but now the interest rate they have to pay is 5 so there will be a significant rise in the loan amount or interest amount they have to pay for these commercial spaces from now on and this is the crisis that is going on and the office spaces there are vacant they are not leased out they are vacant so there is no return but you have to pay the heightened interest amount on that so this is also one of the crisis that is going on in usa right now due to which the loans are becoming more and more expensive next who became the first woman to be honored with GD Birla Award for Scientific Research? So, Professor Aditi Sen De Craig became the first woman to be honored with GD Birla Award for Scientific Research. This was for her contribution in the field of in the field of physics. Right? I repeat, Professor Aditi Sen De was honored with GD Birla Award for Scientific Research in the field of physics right and she became the first woman to be honored with this gd birla award the award was given by kk birla foundation right and she was the first female to receive the shanti saru Bhatnagar prize also in 2018 i repeat she became the first woman to be honored with gd birla award and she became the first woman to be honored with the shanti saru Bhatnagar prize and technology in 2018 Right. If we talk about GD Birla Award, that was instituted in 1991 and it recognizes the Indian scientists who are below the age of 50 years of age. Correct. And a cash prize of 5 lakh rupees was also given. Here you can see she was the first female to receive Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Prize for Science and Technology in 2008. Next. Next is NASA. NASA has launched Airborne Assault through its DC-8 to combat air pollution in, Odyssey, uh, in Asia. I repeat, NASA, NASA using their DC-8 aircraft has initiated to conduct test flights as a part of the inbound and satellite investigation of Asian Air Quality or Asia AQ mission. This is the world's biggest flying laboratory. Here you can see this is DC-8 aircraft. Right, it is carrying a laboratory that will be doing research on the air pollution in the Asian region. The aircraft took off from the NASA's Armstrong Flight Research Center building in California, USA. Right, then remember this Asia air quality. This mission is a joint effort between NASA and South Korea's National Institute of Environmental Research. South Korea's National Institute of Environmental Research, which gathers atmospheric data over several locations in Asia. Right? And this, as the name suggests, it will be tackling the air pollution. It will be providing, not tackling, basically it will be doing research on it. It will be providing insight. And then the solution will be 
provided and work will be done on that particular solution so that the air pollution in the Asian region can be reduced. Right? This will basically we can say improve the pollution in or this will improve the levels of pollution that means it will decrease the pollution. Right? Then it will also study the aerosol chemistry, it will study the ozone layer chemistry, our environment, what is the atmosphere made up of, what are the particles there, what are steps that we can take to reduce those particles. Then if we talk about NASA, who is the administrator here? Bill Nelson. Next, next is India has won four medals that is three gold and one silver in the Asian Indoor Athletics Championship 2024. I repeat, India won a total of four medals in the Asia Indoor Athletics Championship in 2024. Out of these four medals, three were gold and one was silver. I repeat, India finished fifth. Also remember, India finished fifth in the medal tally with four medals out of which three were gold and one was silver. This was the 11th edition of the Asian Indoor Athletics Championship. This was held from 17th to 19th of Feb. And where was this held? This was held in Tehran. Tehran in Iran. So location is important. Where was this held? 11th edition of Asian Indoor Athletics Championship. It was held in Iran. And remember, it was the 11th edition of this Asian Indoor Athletics Championship where India secured 5th in the medal tally with 4 medals. Here you can see the four medals won by India. These are the three golds. Jyoti Araji, Tajindra Pal Singh, Tur, Harmil, Harmilan Bands and Ankita Dayani. Right? These are the four medals won by India. Next is Obutri. Next is renowned Indian jurist and Padma awardee, Fali Sam Narima. As you can see him in the picture. For Dr. Fali S. Nariman recently passed away at the age of 95, right? He was a Padma awardee and government of India honored him with Padma Bhushan that is in the field of public affairs in 1991 and Padma Vibhushan in 2007 in the recognition of his exceptional and distinguished service in the field of public affairs only, right? So Padma Bhushan and Padma Vibhushan was honored to him in both in the field of public relations. Then remember, he was also the recipient of the 19th Lal Bahadur Shastri Award for Excellence in Public Administration in 2018. Next, next is important is International Mother Language Day is observed on 11th or 21st of Feb to raise awareness about the significance of the mother language and 21st of Feb marks the observance of the 25th edition of International mother language day then there is a theme for this that you need to remember multilingual education is a pillar of integration learning i repeat multilingual education is a pillar of intergenerational learning this is the theme for international mother language day next is state news west bengal's finance minister chandrima bhattacharya presented the budget for west bengal which is worth 3.6 lakh crore rupees for fiscal year 25 here the GDP that is gross, gross GSDP gross state domestic product for fiscal year 25 is projected at 18.8 lakh crore showing a growth of 10.5 percent over fiscal year 24. Next, next is Tripura has launched CM Jan Arogya Yojana and it became the first northeast state with a universal health cover. I repeat, Manik Saha, the chief minister of Tripura has launched the Chief Minister Jan Arogya Yojana, this is a universal health insurance scheme for all. With this, Tripura became the first northeastern state to launch a universal health cover. The scheme was launched at a mega event that was held in Agartala, Tripura. And this scheme, CM Jan Arogya Yojana, this is in line with Ayushman Bharat Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana, a national public health insurance scheme launched by the government of India. Under this, Chief Minister Jan Arogya Yojana, this scheme will offer Universal health insurance cover of up to 4.15 lakh rupees of uh, this will cover of 5 lakh rupees per family and it is expected almost 1.4.15 lakh families of Tripura will be benefited under this Chief Minister Jan Arogya Yojana scheme. Next. Here you can see the scheme offers universal health insurance coverage and it will benefit 4.15 lakh families with 5, 5 lakh rupees 
कवर पर फैमिली पर एन एम नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट इज केरला लॉन्च द केरला ब्रांड लोगो एंड वेब पोर्टल आई रिपीट रिसेंटली पी राजीव द मिनिस्टर फॉर इंडस्ट्रीज लो एंड क्वायर गवर्नमेंट ऑफ केरला हैज अनवेल द लोगो एंड अ वेब पोर्टल फॉर द केरला ब्रांड टू इंक्रीज द डोमेस्टिक एंड ग्लोबल डिमांड फॉर द हाई क्वालिटी प्रोडक्ट्स दैट आर मेड इन केरला द लोगो ऑफ केरला ब्रांड कैरीज द नेम ननमा अ मलयालम एक्सप्रेशन विच ट्रांसलेट्स टू गुडनेस ऑल द प्रोडक्ट्स अंडर द ब्रांड विल बी इम्प्रिंटेड विद द वर्डिंग मेड इन केरला टू टैप इन द डोमेस्टिक एंड ग्लोबल मार्केट्स राइट सो केरला हैज लॉन्च द न्यू केरला ब्रांड एंड लोगो एंड ऑन विच इट विल बी रिटर्न ननमा राइट दैट कैरीज द मोटो ननमा दैट मीन्स गुडनेस नेक्स्ट इज इंडियन क्रिकेटर शुभम गिल टू बी द स्टेट आइकन ऑफ पंजाब आई रिपीट रिसेंटली इंडियन क्रिकेटर शुभनम गिल विल बी द स्टेट आइकन ऑफ विच स्टेट ही विल बी द स्टेट आइकन ऑफ पंजाब एंड दिस इज बेसिकली टू प्रमोट एंड क्रिएट यूथ अवेयरनेस राइट इट विल ऑल्सो इंक्रीज वोटर अवेयरनेस देयर बाय इंश्योरिंग वोट परसेंटेज ऑफ सेवेंटी परसेंट इन द अपकमिंग इलेक्शन राइट एंड इंडियन बैट्समैन शुभनम गिल मेड हिज इंटरनेशनल डेब्यू इन दिसंबर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी सो कमिंग बैक रिमेंबर हु हैज बीन नेम्ड एज द स्टेट आइकन ऑफ पंजाब नाउ शुभम गिल ही इज एन इंडियन क्रिकेटर right so these are your important current affairs for the day friends now let's go to one liner revision union minister sarbandana sonowal has released the sagar anklan guidelines for indian port performance index the national conference on janjeevan mission and swachh bharat mission gramin was held and during this gajender singh shekhawat launched three books then milan 2024 was held recently and this was the 12th edition of the india's multilateral naval exercise that was held in andhra pradesh visakhapatnam dharmendra pradhan inaugurated india's first skill india center in odisha india contributed 1 million dollar to the ibsa fund to alleviate poverty then snp global ratings report was released and india's credit growth to moderate to 14% in fiscal year 25 then professor aditi sen they became the first women to be honored with gd birla award for scientific research nasa has launched airborne assault through its dc8 to combat pollution in asia india has won four medals three gold one silver in the asian indoor athletics championship 2024 then renowned indian jurist and padma awardee fali sam narima recently passed away international mother language day observed on 21st of feb west bengal's chief finance minister C Bhattacharya presented the 3.6 lakh crore rupees state budget for fiscal year 25 and Tripura has launched Chief Minister Jan Arogya Yojana and became the first northeastern state with the universal health coverage that will be benefiting 1.45 lakh families with a cover of 5 lakh rupees per annum per family then Kerala launched the Kerala brand logo and a web portal and Indian cricketer Shubman Gill became the state icon of Punjab So these are your important current affairs for the day friends now let's move to some revision current affairs that will be beneficial for your learning next is first ever un international day of the arabian leopard observed on 10th of feb as you can see here international day of the arabian leopard and right it is the first ever so we can say this is the inaugural edition of the international day of the arabian leopard observed on 10th of feb correct and remember arabian leopard is listed as critically endangered on the international union for conservation of nature correct on the iucn red list it has been marked as or listed as critically endangered which organization launched digital nari platform for rural and semi urban women so digital nari platform this was launched for a mumbai maharashtra based company that is pay nearby right they have launched this or pay nearby they have launched this digital nari platform for rural and semi urban women and this will help them to generate sustainable employment for women correct this is also in line with lakhpati didi what is this lakhpati didi initiative under this lakhpati didi initiative the aim is to generate 1 lakh of or 1 lakh rupees of income annually to these women's right and this lakhpati initiative that this was launched in 2023 next which of the following personalities from india is not listed among the forbes 2023 world's 100 most powerful women published in december 2023 among this neeta ambani 
is not listed in the world's 100 most powerful women published in December. Correct? Rest all are marked here. If we talk about Roshni Nadar Malhotra, she was ranked 16. Soma Mandal, she was ranked 70. Uh, 70. Kiran Majumdar Shaw, she was ranked 76. Right? Next. Uh, yes, and Nirmala Sitaraman, ma'am, our finance minister is 36th on this list. 32nd on this list. Next, as per the World Malaria Report by World Health Organization in December, India constituted dash of the malaria cases in WHO Southeast Asian region. So, as per the World Malaria Report by WHO, India constituted 66% of the malaria cases in the WHO Southeast Asian region. Next, as per the Mercom Capital Group's Lending Global Scale, Global Large Scale Solar Photovoltaic Developers Report, published in December, Dash is ranked as the world's second largest large scale solar photovoltaic developer. It is Adani Green Energy Limited, right? Adani Green Energy Limited, this is an Indian company and this is marked as the world's second largest solar photovoltaic developer, large scale solar photovoltaic developer. Correct? It was stopped by whom? It was stopped by Total Energies, right? This is a France based company with 41.3 gigawatt of solar in their portfolio projects and for this adani green energy limited it is 18.1 gigawatts of who launched edcil vidyanjali scholarship scheme so this edcil vidyanjali scholarship scheme in new delhi was launched by our education minister dharmendra pradhan this vidyanjali scholarship scheme will help students to join higher education after senior or higher education to join higher education after secondary education correct and here financial assistance for higher education will be provided to the economically poor students right i repeat under this edcil vidyanjali scholar scheme this was launched by Pradhan Mandha, our Dharmendra Pradhan, our education minister. And the scheme is basically to help the underprivileged students to join higher education after their secondary education. And here financial support will also be provided to the marginalized or economically marginalized. This is important. Take a note. First is name the first of its kind portal launched by the government of India for women in STEM. What is STEMM? right earlier we know we had a term just stem there was one m but now you can see there are two m's in this stem what does this one extra m stands for so let's look at the full form stem means science for women uh, stem means science technology engineering mathematics right this used to be science technology engineering and mathematics now one more m has been added and this m is for medicine right this m is for medicine so science technology engineering mathematics and medicine so for women's in stem recently government of india launched a portal that is swati portal that is swati portal this is a first of its kind interactive online portal for indian women this portal was launched on the occasion of international day of women and girls in science that was in 2024 and it was launched at uh, this day was observed at and this portal was launched at indian national science academy during an event for the celebration of international day of women and girls in science this insa is located in new delhi rbi's sixth bi-monthly monetary policy of fiscal year 24 was released and it projected that india's gdp growth rate to be dash percent in fiscal year 24 so according to rbi's sixth bi-monthly monetary policy india is projected to be grow by seven percent right according to them india will be growing by seven percent in fiscal year 24 right take a note of it next next is 
which organization received RBI approval to set up a subsidiary in Jift City? It is IREDA, right? Indian Renewable Energy Development Agency Limited. They received the approval from RBI to set up their wholly owned subsidiary in IFSC that is situated in Jift City. And where is this Jift City? It is in Gandhinagar, Gujarat. Right, this new platform or this new subsidiary of IREDA, it will serve as an offshore platform for securing competitive funding to push the growth in the renewable energy sector. If we talk about IREDA, it is a Mini Ratna Category 1 CPSC that comes under the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. OECD projected India's GDP growth rate forecast for fiscal year 25 to OECD. OED stands for Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. They have released their economic outlook for fiscal year 25. This report economic outlook was released in Feb 2024 and it stated that India will be growing by 6.2% or the expected GDP growth rate for fiscal year 25 is to be 6.2%. Correct. Similarly, remember for fiscal year 26, OECD projected that India will be growing by 6.5%. Take a note of this. Then if we talk about inflation in India, for fiscal year 25, the inflation is supposed to be around 4.9%. Whereas in fiscal year, uh, sorry, in fiscal year 25, it's going to be around 4.9%. And in fiscal year 24, it was around 5.3%. It will be around 5.3% this time. Correct. Similarly, for fiscal year 26, the inflation is projected to be around 4.3%. So just this is a rough idea. Let me tell you again that this GDP, these are the projected one. These are the expected one, right? So these keeps on changing as per the economic outlook, as per the scenario, how the global GDP or how the global economy plays out according to this, this also keeps changing. Next, which bank celebrated 89th business commencement day? So it is Bank of Maharashtra, right? They have recently celebrated the 89th business of commencement day as a Mahaparivartan Divas 2.0. This was observed in Pune, Maharashtra. And during this 89th business commencement day, only remember Bank of Maharashtra, they have launched 89 new products. Right? They have launched 89 new digital products and services launched by Bank of Maharashtra for their customers. Correct. Next. If we talk about Bank of Maharashtra, who is the managing director and chief executive officer of Bank of Maharashtra? A.S. Rajiv. Where is the headquarter? It is in Pune, Maharashtra. Right? Next. World Defense Show 2024 was held where? So, World Defense Show for the year 2024 was recently held in Riyadh. Now, you will say, sir, Riyadh option is not given here. So, remember, where is Riyadh? Riyadh is in Saudi Arabia. In here also, remember, at Riyadh International Convention and Exhibition Center, that is in Saudi Arabia, this World Defense Show was held from 8th to 8th of Feb, right? Take a note and there is a theme on which this World Defense Show was based that is equipped for tomorrow. Equipped for tomorrow. This is the theme for the World Defense Show held in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. First is second edition of India Energy Week was held where? So, second edition of India Energy Week. India Energy Week. Where was this held? This was held in Goa. Right? And PM Modi inaugurated this second edition of India Energy Week in Goa. Mark this. Next, books and authors. Sanjay Jaju, secretary of MIB, has unveiled a book recently and he was also appointed recently. The name of the book is India Year Book 2024 
and career calling at world book fair in new delhi this is the name of the book india year book 2024 and a career calling at a world book fair right these are the two books that were recently launched by or unveiled by sanjay jaju who is the secretary of mib which are these two book india year book 2024 and career calling these books were launched unveiled at world book fair that was in new delhi and the world book fair was organized by national book trust of india that took place at pragati maidan in new delhi next is which ministry launched apar in remote villages across india so this apar was launched by ministry of education now what is this apar stands for it is automated permanent academic account registry i repeat automated permanent academic account registry next is our homework section first what is the purpose of the european union's recently launched mission aspides in the red sea second recently which state has secured 740 crore under the pradhan mantri uchhtar shiksha abhiyan scheme third which country hosted the third meeting of the asian india trade in goods agreement fourth what is kosar right kwasars what are these kwasars this is a related to basically your okay you find out right fifth mukhya mantri harit vikas chhatravriti yojana this was recently seen in news question asked here is that this mukhya mantri harit vikas chhatravriti yojana was launched by which state so these are your five homework question friends and i need to see maximum participation from all the students watching this video that's all for the day friends i hope you enjoyed the session and you can follow us on the youtube channel as well as apart from youtube channel you can go and follow us at affairs cloud telegram channel and if you have any queries related to the content or the of courses offered to you or the payment which you did on the application you can contact us on the number provided that is 76773362 apart from this friends you can follow us on the facebook as well as on instagram handle that is affairs cloud underscore official in the end friends if you use a code that is vikas10 you will be getting an additional extra 10% discount by using this code vikas10 also if you have any problem regarding the course purchase any problem regarding to our application you can contact us on the mobile number that is 9677333862 and if you want to mail us you can also mail us on support@affairscloud.com and i assure you that our representative from us will be contacting you soon and resolving your issue 